Hello and uh, welcome to another Thursday special Arty class hosted by Shopkeep Arty, the platform supporting everyone to get creative and have fun. I'm your host John in the UK and today we're joined by Keiko Tanabe from San Diego. In fact, for the eagle eyes of you out there, you may have noticed that we've added a new button to the left of me. Um, well, we've spared no expense and this travelometer will take us where we want to go to say hi to our artists. So let's press it now if I can and see if we can get to go to San Diego. What a great, what a great trip. Let's go. There we go. Here we go. Taking it, you're joining me on this great trip. We're flying, I guess, a third of the way around the world. Let's let's zoom on in there and we'll say hello to Keiko. Hello, Keiko. <laughs> Hi, wow. That was great. <laughs> what did you think? What did you think of our travelometer? Pretty good, huh? Oh, I really wish a flight time would be that quick and short. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great, wouldn't it? It would be great. Yes, maybe well, in the future. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, I think the last time that we met was uh, at our Christmas party webinar that we had just before Christmas. So thanks for getting up so early again to be with us. And I really can't wait I know, to see. It is hard for me to get out of the bed while it's too dark. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. But thank you so much for uh, for volunteering to do it. And I can't wait to see what's in store for us today. So uh, thank you for that. Um, oh, thank you. Now, Keiko was originally born in Japan and mostly self-taught. She's embarked on a professional art career um, since since 2005. Since then her paintings have been in many national and international exhibitions and she's gained worldwide recognition. She's a popular mentor and has conducted somewhere in the region of 300 workshops around the world. Absolutely incredible. Um, Keiko is also a member of the National and American Watercolour Societies, uh, the American Impressionist Society and the Laguna Plain Air Painters Association. Unlike our free Tuesday Arty class webinars, which get oversubscribed, our special Thursday Arty webinars guarantee you a place and are more exclusive since we don't live stream. <clears throat> Some of you will have paid £5 uh, or about $6.50 to join in today, but most of you will be paying a similar amount monthly to be our patron, um, getting access to all these live events throughout the month for free. As a patron, you can also watch the recordings of these classes via our online catalogue, which I'll show you later. These special one hour art classes are designed to give you a short pick me up of creative inspiration from some of the world's leading artists. Then around halfway, I ask them to summarize their complete two to three hour workshop webinar, which in relation to Keiko is actually in exactly about a week's time. Hopefully you've got the reference photo in front of you, but if not, you can head over to Shopkeep Arty right now and click on the upcoming events page where you can see details for this class. Um, and in order to give you a bit more time to do that, and because I'm so excited about this, this new travelometer on my left, I'd like you to join me now as we fly to the Rialto Bridge in Venice so that we can get in the mood prior to handing over to Keiko so let's let's do let's do that now let's let's go for it hopefully it'll work first time oh no it didn't second time okay let's do it here we go Watch this. Here we are. Look at that. There we are. We're at the Rialto Bridge. And I think I can see I think I can see Keiko down there waiting for us. Come on, let, let's go let's go and see her now. Hi Keiko. Hi, welcome to Venice. Hello. <laughs> oh, 
wish. So I so wish I was there. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But we can travel anywhere in our art, right? That's exactly, the, exactly. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. <laughs> so let's just pretend that we're there now. Let's just pretend right. that we're there now. Right. Well, um, welcome to Venice. And today we're going to try <laughs> painting gondolas. Brilliant. I, I can't wait. Yeah, it's, like you said, it's one of my favorite places. I know. It's a special, special place, isn't it? So how should people start today then? Well, um, so I sent a reference photo yeah. of the gondolas, which I hope uh, you all have in front of you, uh, you know, as a printout or maybe in your device. So maybe sh uh, I'll show you. I have it in my device. I'm going to just take a look at it while I do a demo. And then if you have paper, watercolor paper, and then a few colors, uh, you, we don't need so many colors today. Because as you can see, it's not very colorful. I mean, it is colorful, but in a way, but uh, you know, in a way, it's limited. So whatever color you want to use, of course, you can change. And if you want to make it a little bit more uh, exciting, uh, but if you want to show show the colors that we see in the photo, you don't need so many. So you just have a few color. You need a few colors and uh, a few brushes. No brushes too. You don't need so many. So I'm I may just use one or two today. So that's all you need, very simple. Okay, so I'm gonna first um, um, draw because that's what I always do uh, before I start painting on the paper, directly on the paper. And then if you want to paint along with me, um, I will give you some tips and you can do it with me simultaneously. But if you prefer just watching, that's okay too. And also, also I'm gonna do a workshop next week on, on a similar theme. It's Venice, but it's a bit different um, scene. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that at the halfway mark, mm -hmm. just okay. to, so but that we don't. What we do today, I hope it will be a good precursor uh, for that workshop. Yeah, yeah. So please uh, uh, keep that in mind. Well, whatever we practice today will help us in our workshop. All right. Now, you've actually had a hello from Hazel Murray, who is in Italy, and she said it's raining there at the moment. So um, mm. there you go. Maybe maybe it was uh, maybe it's better. We are where we are because it's not raining. OK, but anyway. yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, especially when you want to use watercolor. We have to. Yes, dry. Exactly, exactly. At least our painting has to stay dry. right? Yeah. Yeah. But we can go to one of the cafes and sit. In oh, the cafe yes. And the oh, lovely. Dry. Yeah, that's actually what I love to do when I travel. <laughs> so rain or whatever, storm, and they're not going to stop us, right? Exactly. <laughs> we exactly. keep painting. All right. So sh should I start, John? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Let's go. All right. Yeah. So the gondolas, as you may know, it's a very typical Venetian boat. And, and I heard, um, I don't know much about history, but I heard only uh, persons of um, like a high class, um, they uh, they used it for them to get around the town but nowadays it's main, mainly for tourists but but the shape uh, it's one of the things i like about gondolas is the shape but at the same time it's it's not an easy shape to draw accurately so i want to just explain what they look like uh, you know in, in my drawing and the top part of the paper and i will make a painting uh, the lower part of the paper and of course, you don't have to do it this way. You can use just two separate sheets of paper, uh, but you know it's not going to be a huge and detailed painting, so you don't need a big space for actual painting. So the gondolas, uh, if you have seen them, they're actually quite long. And I heard it has uh, there's the one gondola is ten more than ten meters long. So if you were looking at it from sideways, we need quite a um, bit of space width we had to show, but uh, depending on how we look at them, it can look very short. It can look uh, almost, you, you know, like um, you can fit in a small square box. And if we're looking at the uh, the front or the back or something like that, so the shape is very very important. Outline that's what I'm talking about. So, in, but whatever I draw, that's what I pay attention to. Outline. So the gondolas. Let's uh, take one gondola out of the photo to just, just do the contour drawing uh, to show the outline. And what about this one? Okay, this one, sorry about the ring. It's one of the lights uh, above my paper. So I'm gonna just try to draw this one first, uh, okay? 
So the outline, what I'm, what I'm talking about is just the outside edge. It uh, looks kind of like a banana, uh, the inside of gondola, right? A little, maybe a little too fat to be a banana, but it kind of looks like a banana. That's what uh, uh, this reminds me of, this shape. And I attach uh, the side of a boat uh, here, uh, the way I shade it. And, but uh, initially I draw just uh, the rim uh, to show the inside of a boat. And then I, I believe we, we see a comb, comb-like shape. It's a front of a boat and it's um, right here. And it's very interesting. I didn't know this and this shows a lot of things. Uh, it's actually uh, maybe a shape of Venice and then yeah, these two, uh, not, not two, uh, actually there are five or six of them, uh, the two teeth of the comb, um, each one signifies uh, like a district, important district, a neighborhood in Venice. And I heard that this round shape is a Rialto Bridge. That's where we are, right, John? Okay, so that's- We are, we just sat on the side and I, in fact, I've just nipped off to get an ice cream. <laughs> That's a good place to have ice cream, <laughs> gelato. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Whereas the uh, next one, uh, right uh, left side of that boat in the photo, left in the photo, left side in the photo, uh, we it's the same shape, same size, but uh, the orientation is quite different. So it's quite long from uh, beginning to the end. So uh, this is almost right next to the first boat. So the, the, the end of the boat in the same place, almost the same place, but, and in the front too, it's not really uh, far, uh, it's almost the same place, but it's uh, the, uh, the head of the boat is kind of lifted, elevated from the water. So it doesn't look like it's in the same place, but it is. But it ends right here, it has to end right here to show uh, for us to be able to show uh, the length of the boat. So it's quite long, like I said, about more than 10 meters long. And, uh, and it has to look a little bit skinnier where I said, uh, the, uh, like a banana shape right here, has to look quite different. It still looks like a banana, but it's a very, very skinny banana. Right? Well, maybe I should have done banana first and then attach this side of the, the boat, like I did to the first one. But I think you get the point. Uh, same boat, same shape, but depending on the angle, it has to look quite different. And then if you want to do this, uh, the um, part, uh, the cone, you can do that. But it will be the same, pretty much the same thing. So I won't do, I won't do it. And then, of course, uh, there's another boat to the right side of the first boat. Let's do that one. It's uh, looking totally different direction, opposite direction, but the end of the boat, almost the same place. So the tip of the boat, I will show on the same line, but it's look, uh, going that way, right? But we don't see the entire shape in the photo, so it's a bit difficult to get uh, this angle, right? but it, it looks like that all right but all the other boats um here uh kind of like this it's all uh, looking that way and it's quite skinny and very long right so we have to make sure they look a little smaller because they are farther away uh, but we don't have to change too much uh, to what we did to this bow, we can almost repeat the same shape over there. Just make sure they look a little smaller like this. Okay. And then after this, after we get the outline, well, I did more than an outline to the first two boats, we can do take care of the inside. Well, in this photo, we don't really see people, but if they're you know in the canal, usually we see gondolier, the person who drives the boat, right, with a long oar, 
and I'm sure there are tourists, where they are mainly for tourists, but local people sometimes may use it, but I think what they ride, uh, the local people, is a, it's a big, bigger gondolas. And I think uh, they may have a different name, spaghetti or something. It may mean something else, but I, I have seen it. But anyway, the shape wise, it's almost the same. It may be the same, uh, it's slightly bigger in size. So inside, actually, uh, we don't really see people. Maybe that's good news. We don't have to do people today. Uh, but if you like, if you can do people, uh, uh, because it will be helpful for the workshop painting. And the, usually the gondolier, the person who drives the boat with the oar, I think he stands um, in the, towards the back of the gondola. Which side? Um, I'm not sure. I have to see a reference photo. Maybe somebody knows. Uh, but I know that gondola is, uh, is a, a symmetric, you know, not the symmetric, uh, it's not uh, the same on one side uh, from the other. It's a symmetric shape uh, with, uh, I think um, left side is a little wider, I believe. Maybe that's where he stands on. I say he, because most gondoliers are male, but I heard there is a female gondolier. Maybe there are more than one right, nowadays, I don't know. So usually uh, the gondolier will stand right there, right? If you want to do him today. Uh, but inside, uh, without him, uh, we have to take care of, um, understand. First, we have to understand what's there. So it's covered uh, with uh, like a blue, uh, like a tarp-like thing. But underneath, uh, there are chairs where the people sit. Um, but of course, we don't really have to use our imagination to do that. We just paint what we see today. So just a blue cover uh, on the gondolas. And then here in between two uh, coverings, uh, it's, it's dark, right? It's uh, almost black uh, and that's what we paint. So both sides, we're gonna just paint a nice blue. Well, sometimes it can be a uh, different color. Um, but like I said, today we're gonna just paint, do painting uh, using the photo, mostly from photo. So we're not gonna make a lot of changes, okay? But it's, um, because there's something inside um, under the, uh, the cover, we have to sort of show the shape by um, making the, the top look a little bit interesting. Um, so that's something we have to keep that in mind. Um, it's, um, there is something underneath. So knowing what they are, I think it helps to show that shape. Okay, so that's uh, really, what I would do, uh, the, almost the same thing in the, the lower part of the paper as a preliminary drawing for a painting. But this one, I just wanted to show you the shape of the gondolas because I think that if you haven't drawn a gondola especially, it's really not um, a complicated shape, but to get the shape right, it may be a little bit uh, challenging. So just make sure you pay attention to the outline I think and if you uh, approach that way, you can be a little bit more confident um, because you don't have to worry about anything else. Just make sure the outline uh, and you get, get it right without worrying about all the details like the comb or inside, you can attach them afterward. Okay, so under this line, uh, this line is not part of the painting, but under this line, I'm gonna do a painting right here, okay, including the background because I didn't do it in the first one. Okay, so in the back, we see one of the famous, very historic, but famous touristic spots in Venice. And I think it's called the San Giorgio. Uh, it's an island, a small island. And there's a big, um, like a tower over there. But there everything, well, it is big, but it, everything is so far away. They have to look small, right? So you don't have to. And also we don't have to worry about the details. Just you know, make sure to, if you, if you want to show that nice tower, they, they don't look too wide or too fat. It has to look skinny. It's probably, it's better to make it straight. This one is not leaning, although I have seen a couple of leaning towers in Venice, like the ones in Pisa. Okay, so there's a dome right next to it. And actually between the tower and the dome, uh, there are smaller 
to a smaller tower there. But once again, it's something in the background. We don't really need to show all the other, uh, everything, just uh, entire shape. This too, actually, if you pay attention to the outline, I mean, of course, if you like what you see, just pay attention to the outline. Don't need to do uh, the small details, especially from the beginning. If you feel like you need some de details, after you take your outline, you can add more inside. That's what I always do. Okay, but it's today's um, theme is gondola, so I don't want to do anything more to that. And then I will uh, just go ahead and do the gondolas. And the first one, like I did in this one, uh, I want uh, right here. Okay, so not much space because um, I only need to show a part of another one next to it. So this one has to be um, on the right side of the paper. Okay. Yeah, like I said, uh, like a banana shape. That's what I did. And then this is where the comb is. And actually, this line is quite long, right? All the way to the bottom of the boat. Okay, this. Yeah, like I said, the details are not really necessary, but sometimes it helps. So like this one is. Uh, it's something very typical. I mean, it has to be there as a, if it's a gondola. And then after we make sure the outline is good, we can take care of the details, or I already did a little bit here and inside. Okay, like this. All right, let's do the next one. We take care of the harder ones first. Uh, so this one is quite long and has to kind of be behind the first one. I believe this is the closest one. And so everything on that side has to be kind of hidden behind this. And in a way, when I said that, it sounds funny. Uh, but that's uh, how I describe uh, their position. Okay, this one has to be quite long. Again, I'm just doing the outline, okay, um, like that. And this one, we don't have to show too much of uh, inside of the boat. Okay, kind of like this. And then we attach the comb. Like this. Yeah, this one has to be a little bit bigger. All right. Yeah, so the outline, I did it, uh, but I have to add something on top of it uh, where the chairs are. So I didn't draw very dark uh, because I knew I had to change a little bit. But this one I didn't have to because the, where the chairs are completely inside the outlines. Okay, so let's do the few more, almost uh, like this one. So it should be a little bit easier. We already practiced and they're smaller. so. Just to make sure you show the the very end, you know this uh, this part, this part, um, almost the same place, um, slightly below the horizon. This is the horizon, okay. And then yeah, this one. It's very close to us, but we don't have to show all, all of it. That that's good. Well, you know, it's good. Uh, but of course, we had to sort of see the entire shape. So if, uh, the visible part inside the painting will look good. You know, as if uh, you have more paper, you try to kind of draw all the way. I uh, don't stop and right inside the paper all the way to the end. And then still, you should continue to make this line uh, nice and, and round as if it continues. All right, so that's it. Um, of course, uh, if you ask me, what about those uh, wooden uh, poles? And yes, I'm gonna do it. And maybe it helps and if we already decide you know, where we're gonna do that. Um, but I, I think uh, I will just do those at the very end without drawing. So uh, I started doing it just to give you an idea uh, where they are. Uh, I didn't do many, just a few. But if you wanna draw them, that's fine too. 
But my approach to drawing, I don't draw everything, only the important shapes, uh, which are already there. And for me, that's more than enough. Okay, so I'm gonna start painting, not here, but right here. And then I will do that first part of the painting, then I maybe can break after that. That sounds good. We had a couple of uh, comments about the new travelometer. So Trina said, I love the travelometer. Oh, it's a tongue twister. I love the travelometer, John. How fun. Um, Andrea said, excellent job, John. Uh, Jennifer, wow. Um, Susan said, men just love gadgets. Oh, yeah, it's fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and Jennifer then said about the Rialto Bridge, she's been there years ago and brings back memories when she sketched there. So that's lovely. That's um, great. And then um, Avi said, excellent effects, just add Italian music when we land. Well, God, what do you want? Blood? <laughs> yeah. I'll give that I, some I like thought, that Avi. I'll give that some thought to. Uh... Can we have a gondolier singing, serenading for <laughs> yes, us? Yes, yes. Do you know what? I will come up with that for the workshop. I will come up with that for the workshop. Okay. Or you could pose as a gondolier. Um, mm, yes. And sing Maybe for not. Us. I'll reserve judgment on that one. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to just do the sky. When I, well, I, I don't know how you describe the color in the sky in the photo. So actually, you can put any color or no color at all if you think it's white. But it's not really white. Uh, there's a little bit of color, isn't it? there uh, isn't there right and so i just put the very pale lemon yellow with a slightly uh a, a hint of turquoise in it but it's almost just water you know what well, turquoise it's because it was it's always in my palette and i never clean my palette so i kind of invaded my lemon yellow i tried to wipe it out uh, off my palette but i didn't do it completely so it's still there so, but anyway, that's uh, the sky, right? And then I continue. Now I'm showing a little bit more turquoise. And then just paint the water, lagoon, right? And if you're wondering, what about gondolas? I'm not worried about gondolas right now. I'm just doing water and uh, Turquoise, this is turquoise. There's a little bit of lemon yellow in the beginning because I didn't really wash my brush completely. And, but I'm increasing the amount of turquoise more and more. So you see uh, just that color. And then just added thalo blue to it. Again, I didn't really rinse my brush. So all of the three colors are inside. But of course, almost no lemon yellow at this point. Well, let's increase the amount of turquoise a little bit more. And then we will reach the end soon. Yeah, so in a way, what I'm doing right now, in the, especially in the water, in the lagoon, that's a graded wash. Yeah, it's starting with a very pale wash, and then I gradually, I darken by increasing the amount of pigment. Okay. And then maybe on top of this, I spread a little bit. Yeah, I don't really mind when I splatter. I don't try to cover any part of the painting. Sometimes it goes, uh, the spots go to a, a different place where I don't want to see them. But whatever happens, I'll try to be careful, but whatever happens, happens. I just let it happen. I try not to control too much. Okay, so after this, maybe we only have to do one or two little things and we can have a break. So what no problem, you, no problem. I'm, I'm what ready. What I mean by that is um, the background. Yeah, so I just mix the colors in my, as you can see, my palette is not really clean. I just mix colors to make a gray, actually. And if you have, pre -ha you have a pre-mixed gray, that's fine. And if you really want to make background uh, the, where the buildings are colorful, you can use those colors for the trees, green for trees, and the buildings are kind of brick color, I, I can see, and also white. And in the top of the tower is turquoise. You can use those colors, but I, I suggest don't you don't do too much to the background. So I just mix gray. Um, 
and I put in that gray where I drew buildings. But of course, the paper is wet, so I can't uh, finish that part. I had to be very careful, even here, it's spreading towards the sky, which I don't mind at this point, but if it does more than that, I have to sort of stop it by tilting the paper this way. But I, I think it's okay. So I'm not gonna do anything. I'll try, I'm not gonna try to stop it. And in the water, I think um, the reflection of the boat, uh, that's where the water looks a little darker. And then I'm, you can use the same color or you can use, you know, gray or whatever color you like. I'm doing both. Uh, I ended the water with a thalo blue, so I, there's a thalo blue, but I added gray to it. And uh, just under the gondolas where we're going to show the reflection. Well, this is the reflection already. Uh, I'm going to do more later, but as a first step, I want to do a little bit right now. As you can see, uh, the paper is not dry, so whatever I do will not have any uh, definition. Okay, so as a first part of the painting, that's, that's all I want to do, and I want to dry it a little bit. So John, maybe it's a good time. Over to me, to... over to me. And how are you getting on? How are you enjoying it? Um, do you feel transported? Is it is it almost like you're on vacation? <laughs> we're, we're trying. I'm waiting we're trying. for gelato, John. <laughs> um, now, although we don't live stream this on the day of the event, we will publish this on YouTube for a limited time. So if you are watching the recording on there, Keiko and I would really appreciate you pressing the thumbs up. YouTube will then suggest this video to more people, which in turn should enable us to bring an hour of creative joy to more homes around the world. So thank you so much. As mentioned, these classes give you a great flavour of what's to come in the artist's full two to three hour workshop webinar. Um, these events have restricted numbers that make them more exclusive and immersive. They're also the best learning environments as you can speak directly with the artist and pick up a lot of their tips and tricks. The price to attend is just £38 or the equivalent is about $50 US which works out at just over £12 or $17 an hour so it's really great value. So Keiko what, what do you plan to cover in that workshop? Oh so I chose another Venice scene and we will paint uh, the canal with the gondolas like we're doing today but it's going to be a night scene which ah. I don't often paint, especially in a workshop. So I hope uh, you will find that interesting. Uh, try to paint the night scene. Yes, like this. Thank you for showing it to us. No problem. Well, I did this some time ago, and uh, it's, it was not a planner painting. It was too dark. Although I have painted at night in Venice uh, on location, but I had to stand under the street light, and then even that street light was not very helpful because all the colors in my palette look the same. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the night scene is uh, it's very interesting because you, you can you know find uh, all kinds of light sources, whereas the daytime the light sources is the sun. So it can be interesting, but also there is a challenge in it. So I, I like to show you how to do a night scene using Venice as a location, and of course uh, we're practicing gondolas, so that part should be. It will be a piece of cake by that time, right? <laughs> and then, of course, the gondol gondolas with the people. I mean, the painting with the people to me is more interesting always. So we're gonna we're gonna do people as well. So if you want to practice more Venice thing and a night thing, and people in this case gondoliers, uh, I love their hat, straw hat, and striped <laughs> shirt, and. It, we'll all do that and even more. So I hope you will attend the workshop next week. Yeah, no, it sounds really interesting. It. And I would imagine that, yeah, night scenes, you don't really think about it, but it, it, it probably is, it does probably throw up different challenges. Now, if you're interested to join us, I'm pleased to say that I'm actually launching a hot ticket right now that gives you 10% off for the next 24 hours. So um, let's see how. Uh, you can book Keiko's upcoming workshop and we'll also launch the special 
hot ticket as well. So let me just um, share my screen with you. And so you head over to Shopkeep Arty and you click on Arty classes above and then select upcoming events. And that'll take you to the upcoming events page. Then if you kind of scroll down, um, you'll see Keiko's workshop there at the um, at the time of 3.15 in the afternoon UK time. And on that page, it kind of explains all the, um, it gives you a little bit about some of the things you'll be learning and then also explains the uh, materials list at the bottom as well. Um, and so if you're interested, you click on the link here and that will then take you to Keiko's shop and you can see there we've got the live webinar and we've also got the video tutorial if you wanted to pre-book the video instead and there's two prices the full video if you, you haven't attended the live workshop or you get a big discount if you have so now let's launch the hot ticket there we go <laughs> and it's got the flames and everything there and so the hot ticket you can either purchase the live webinar or the webinar and the video and both those prices have got the 10% discount so that's going to be available for the next 24 hours once um, we've we've done the workshop the video will be located on our video catalog which is on our website and if you're a patron you can then uh, visit the, the patron section of that catalogue and all those things you just click a button and then you can watch uh, the various videos that you're applicable for if you want to find out about all the benefits that you get as a patron we've got a patron page there and it just explains all the different benefits and, and what you get so hopefully that helps brilliant so Keiko I think it's time for part two and hopefully your paints dried so um, how, how's it looking yeah I think so great Okay, let's go back to Venice. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. So oh, we're gonna. Je finally... Jennifer said. Jennifer said. Oh, a glass of Rioja would be good as well. Being in 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 Italy. Yep, that's that's true. That's true. Um, Raquel said she 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 likes this um, this view here of your painting and the palette. She said it was a very good, very nice view, which was good. Um, okay, that's good. All right. So we're gonna paint um of course we're going to try to finish uh the gondolas right usually they're painted very very dark almost black and i think it's black but i don't really have black in my palette do you i don't know um i guess it's possible to get black in watercolor but usually when i want to show black i pick either i pick a similar color or i mix colors um so the first uh, i just tested the color over there that's neutral tint, um, and I think and it passes a black, right? Right. But if you don't have that color or something similar, and if you prefer, or if you prefer mixed in, maybe you can try thero blue if you have it, or any blue, or and burnt sienna or burnt umber, and a little bit of alizarin or some kind of red, which I did uh, in the next. Uh, space to show you the color. It's a little bit greenish because I put too much theta blue. So let me add more red, Alizarin and crimson. So what do you think? On the screen, probably they look almost the same. Well, they look almost the same on paper as well in front of me. I don't think the camera is showing anything different or too different. So you can just test it after you, if you especially if you're mixing colors. But if you have something, uh, if you have a color that's appropriate to use in the gondola, just go for it. So I'm going to just, um, yeah, so the one, you know, not the inside. Inside, maybe there's some parts that are black, um, but I don't want to do it right now. Just a side of a boat, like here. And then I have to avoid going inside this uh, beautiful uh, shape because that's in front of this boat I'm painting right now. So we have, that. this is a, a reason I had to wait for the paper to be completely dry. This is, this thing is called a negative painting. When you paint around the shape, it's called a negative painting. Um, if it's really extremely important to make sure paper is dry whenever you do a negative painting, especially. 
then of, of course, um, a lot of boats uh, I'm gonna finish by painting positively, painting inside, not outside. But if you want to show definition to any shape, always paint, uh, you have to paint on the dry paper. I mean, if you already wetted the paper, you have to wait or use a dryer or whatever uh, to make sure the paper is dry. Okay, so any part that is black, I can just keep using this color. Okay, and then of course I made sure the paper is dry. So I'm not checking anymore. But if the paper is still drying, some parts may be dry, but other parts may not be dry enough. So you might wanna make sure if it, before you paint each bow, make sure the paper is dry. But to me, if it's dry enough, because this pigment concentration that I'm using right now is quite thick. Okay, so it's not gonna move too much on the paper, even if the paper is slightly wet. So in, if it's dry enough, meaning when you place the pigment on the paper, it's not moving, it's not spreading, it's dry enough. And you know, we have to wait until the paper is completely dry. Okay, so over there, or the, there are actually many boats, but we don't really have to be too careful because they look smaller and uh, that's kind of almost like a background. So I just darkened all the black part of the boats or the gondolas. Just funny, sounds funny for me to call gondolas boats. They're kind of boats. Okay, so uh, I'm looking at inside or gondolas where I can show, safely show black. Oh, it's not really black, like I said, but I just, uh, for the convenience sake, I'm calling it black. Um, but other parts will be blue, right? So the blue, of course, you can use uh, whatever blue you like. I don't have many choices in my palette. I have a cobalt blue and a little bit of a cerulean. Well, thalo blue is a blue too, but I, I don't want to use thalo for this part. I just mix cobalt blue and the cerulean. But this too, it's basically the positive painting. So if you have a good drawing, you have no problem. I expect everybody has a good drawing and just paint inside the drawing, paint inside the shape where it's blue. And by this time, um, I'm sure the background, the water, the lagoon must be dry, but the black part we just painted, so it may not be dry. So if you are concerned, I mean, of course you can wait until the black part is completely dry, but we don't have much time, so you might wanna just dive in and do it. But if you're concerned, um, try not to paint all the way to, or, you know, inside the black part, just paint, uh, you know, separately. I'm not painting it that way, you know, uh, right here, I just did demonstrate it. In the black part, I painted over here too. But if your black is not from, uh, I mean, too fluid, you have to uh, kind of paint separately, blue part and black part. All right, so this way gondolas are painted, but if you look at this part, uh, the, the head of the boat, I think, I need to darken or gray slightly, um, not too much. Here it's okay because it's got a nice contrast. The background is very dark, except inside this shape. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, so these boats need to be dry a little bit. So I will take care of the background where the buildings are, right? I'm using this time. I never waste time just waiting around. Always there is something I can paint inside somewhere in the paper. So I look for that. So, uh, well, if you're thinking, well, wow, that's not the same color, you're right. I'm not trying to show uh, accurate colors over there. I'm just trying to show a shape of the background. But if you are a fan of lots of colors in your painting, which is great, uh, you can change color. Not, uh, you can paint this part differently. So it's a choice you can make. But another reason is time constraint. I don't really have much time. And, and so I'm not really trying to do too much color wise. All right, so this way, the background is a little bit more believable, not too blurry, right? Okay, so what I have to do to finish this is to uh, add more reflections or waves. Uh, the water is moving quite a bit. Um, and also those wooden stick. Maybe there's a name for it, I don't know. If, uh, again, if somebody knows, anybody knows, please let me know. Okay, so I did a little bit reflection, if you remember, you can see but they kind of disappear a little bit. So I'm going to bring it back, especially under the boats, each boat. Well, that's where I tried something. But those wooden um, poles too, if uh, we can see all the way to the bottom, like here, there's one, which I haven't painted yet, but I will. They should have reflection as well, right? So. It may be helpful if we do those wooden poles before we do the reflection, but I'm, uh, I decided to do this first and I already started, so I'm not gonna just stop right now. And so um, it may be difficult to think about uh, two things at once, but I have, to, I have to kind of decide where I'm gonna show those wooden poles. Uh, especially the ones uh, near these important boats. Okay, so, so I'm doing both reflections from boats and reflections from those wooden thing. Okay, well, uh, we don't need too many of these strokes. Yeah, we want to show more clean background. All right, so those wooden thing, the color is, is something uh, we all think about, but sometimes I just I ignore the color. Uh, shapes are more important, uh, contrast is more important. In this case, that's what I would say. So I, I will darken. And some of the, you know, the, those poles look quite dark, uh, but because the light uh, is behind, that's why. And the most of them are exposed or are getting the sunlight directly. So they don't look too dark, only the bottom. But I will make them quite dark um, that way. I can paint them uh, quickly. Okay, so I have to be careful. I'm going to start uh, with this one. But the, it has to go through the buildings over there. And I'm pretty sure that it's not dry over there. Of course, I can test it to see if a pigment pigment uh, spread. If not, it's safe, but um, sometimes, uh, you know, if I, if I test it, it's, it's already done. It's, you know, and if it's too wet, it's too, too late. Uh, so I just avoid the area, just paint uh, on both sides of it, like I do here. Um, so it's not connected, but I can connect it later, right? After the buildings are completely dry. So you have to be just careful. Uh, if, just because you test it here and it's safe, doesn't mean it's safe other parts. 
So there's a little bit of a uh, caution uh, we, we need to take to finish this. But there are many of them. We don't need so many. And just a um, few or one or two on both sides of the bow because that's where they tie the boats uh, to anchor the boats. Usually, yeah, they are very close while well, they park them the boats near near it so you have to sort of um, show them close to the boats and then maybe you might want to change the height a little bit and not all of them at the same high height and then some are in the back and they are they look they have to look shorter and then maybe the distribution you don't want to make the spacing between them exactly the same. That would be boring. So make sure you show a variety whenever you repeat something. Uh, that's what I try to do. Okay. I guess that's probably enough. There, yeah, I'm sure there, there are more. Um, and we may think we need more because it's there, but I don't really think that way. Just because it's there is not a uh, reason good enough. Uh, you have to always think about the design of a painting. So what I'm doing is, um, it's like a tie, maybe a rope. Uh, without it, the gondola will float away. And then right here, Either I had to do a negative painting to show the comb nicely or darken the comb inside, which will make it look a little awkward. So I would do, uh, try to do a little bit more negative painting right here to show this shape all the way to the bottom. Okay, and here too, I could do the same thing, but let me try something different. And maybe I will darken the comb. So positive painting, negative painting, we can choose. Just because it's the same thing doesn't mean they have to be painted the same way. But to show any shape, we just have to create a contrast. That's all. Okay. And I'm just showing a little bit more definition inside before I say done, but it's nearly finished. And usually when I think painting is finished, I step back a little bit and usually I can find one or two things that I forgot or should do. It's very important, probably the most important step. Okay, all right. But I don't want to do too much. It's just a little practice for the workshop painting. So it looks I hope lovely, you Keiko. enjoyed it. It looks, looks really nice. And I, I think I love the depth of the water that you've given. It's, it's, it looks like it's got a real depth to it. That, uh, thank just you. The transparency and everything, really lovely. So thank you so much for that. Um, and how did you, how did you get on? Um, if you... If you want to uh, write some comments for Keiko, I'll read them out to her in a minute. Um, now, both Keiko and I would love to see what you've come up with. I've created a special post relating to this class on Facebook, as always, where you can upload a photo of your painting. Simply search for Shopkey Party on Facebook, or if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link of uh, the, the Facebook post in the description. Um, in addition to reading comments from Keiko, which you might get as a bit of a mini crit uh, on your on your post, you can also have a bit of a nosy at what other people have done. And if you like them, we encourage you to give them a thumbs up. The pictures with the most likes from all our arty classes during the week are featured in our Saturday Roundup newsletter email. So get posting. 
Um, now, I also mentioned our patrons a few times in this class. Being one of our patrons not only helps support our channel, but you actually save money on attending workshops or purchasing videos. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, again, if watching on YouTube, you can find a link about our patron program in the description below. This week, I've got some new patrons to welcome into the community. So let me press the button of thanks. It's that other button behind me. Uh, so let me just do that now. And we will say thank you to um, Beth Nelligan, Nancy Say, Margaret Hanna, Helen Kay, Jane Senior, Susie Home, and Sharifa Robinson. Thank you so much guys for your support that's uh, that's really great and hopefully you're watching this today um so the end of another great arty class if you do want to join keiko and i for the longer workshop don't forget that the hot ticket will expire by tomorrow some comments from our audience keiko i'll just uh head over to you again um what a brilliant demo, says Louise. Keiko gives excellent explanation. Thank you both. Um, another fabulous class from Trina. Many thanks to Keiko for sharing her love of watercolour and her expertise. I'm going to practice my gondolas. What a lovely painting. Um, Karen says, I feel as if I'm standing looking at them. Thank you so much for a fantastic webinar. Really looking forward to the workshop. Um, Mary Lynn, lovely. Can't wait for next week. Can we see the finished painting once more? Don't worry, Mary Lynn. I will show you that in a minute. Judy, Keiko, thanks again for a great demo demo happy new year and see you next week from judy um okay. hazel as usual i am way behind i hope to post first thing tomorrow morning don't worry hazel um lily thanks for getting up so early to give us so much fun uh, that's lily from santa barbara uh, carol very nice i really appreciate how easily she shares her thought process and she thinks through choices and why she made them so thank you for that um I could watch Keiko paint for days and days from Trina. Um, uh, thank you so much. It was great from Nancy. Uh, wishes from us, from Bobby. Um, see you in Venice, <laughs> says Christian. Um, and thanks Keiko from Bobby. Anne, love the demo. Thanks both. Great session. Wow, what, what a lot of thanks. Don't worry, I will go back onto the picture again in a minute. Um, just like Donald Trump, I'm now actually off to Florida to host uh, Vlad Yeliseyev's workshop where we're going to be exploring value sketching. So for those of you joining me there, I'll see you very soon. If not, I hope to see you next Tuesday when we'll be doing another free arty class with professional animal artist Liz Chatterton, painting otters. So we should have an utterly fantastic time. <laughs> Couldn't, couldn't resist that um so thank you for joining us today and it, so it's goodbye from me and obviously uh goodbye and thank you so much to keiko thank you, thank you keiko. Just oh. it, don't you? yeah what right? a big crowd it was bigger than i thought um i'll just finish on the painting for everybody see you soon bye thank you everybody thank you john no worries, Keiko. See you next week. Yeah, see you next week.